I'm at Crazy Cars in Hillside, looking at a 2013 Dodge Challenger with the big 6.4 in it. And they're saying it's got a pretty consistent misfire at idle. Oh God. Ugh. Feels like a single cylinder miss. No, oh, you can feel it all right. You can hear it a little too. Dick. We got the st uh, scan tool connected here. Well, cylinder three miss. All right, we'll see if we can get some freeze frame here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we do. But let's uh, let's get into this ECM here. Let's see, we got some freeze frame. We're gonna find out why. All right, there you go, freeze frame. All right, so the most recent one we can see here is a PO303. All right, freeze frame caused by DTC, PO303, and uh, we were in closed loop. Uh, what happened here? Map pressure was at 3.7 PSI, barrel, vacuum. APP one and two. So, and the trims. Let's take a look at these trims. This isn't really anything I'd bat an eye at. Uh, the misfire was on cylinder four. So that's the left bank of the engine, I believe. Or cylinder three. It was on the left bank of the engine. So that's one, three, five, and seven. So that's bank one. Just good thing to note here that we do have higher than normal trims. I mean, not crazy high, but just something to think about when we're kind of sifting through this stuff. You know? So, anyways, what we're going to do now, um, I'm going to start it up, take a look at some freeze. Uh, yeah, you don't mind, bro? Start it up for me. We'll take a look at some uh, some data. Shoot. Ah! So number three does have about 12 counts. Not really counting anything right now. There's one on six. I'm not writing home about that. Can you do me a favor and throw it in gear? secondary ignition on cylinder three but we're also going to get cylinder four and uh maybe even one or two on the other bank just to get something good to compare it to okay, so uh, uh john thornton says that the most negative place on the vehicle when it's running is actually the block or the alternator case in this case we're just going to take our negative because we're checking stuff we're going to go right to the block all right, so you can bring it on over here. I want you to see um, what my hands are. So we're, we're trying to figure out where to put our probes here. And quick and easy way to do it, right? What's the common wire on this? It looks like it's a, looks like it's a black with a yellow tracer. And then the top wire looks like that's the one that's changing or like a brown with a yellow chase. So this is a blue. Let's see how this one's different. That mm -hmm. one's a yellow. Mm -hmm. So that one's definitely our control. That's the one that we're gonna go for. So here's one, three, five, and seven. Here's our suspect cylinder. So 
So we're gonna go into control on three, and we'll go into control on five. Okay, so he basically held it at like what, three grand? No, it was, uh, not even, it was like 14, 1400. 1400 hours? Or 1400. Okay, with his foot on the brake, the car in gear. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we're gonna do real quick is, I don't know how good this is gonna come out, but I just wanna kinda zoom in on um, these two patterns. Like I said, this is cylinder three in the green, and this is cylinder five in the red. We're just gonna take a look at a whole bunch of them when he was uh, kind of brake torquing this thing. Okay. So the three looks like maybe it went lean. Actually, no, it went rich. This guy went lean. Yep. Five went went uh, went lean. This one went rich. But not crazy lean, you know, almost normal. So here's a different spot in the pattern. And we're just going to snoop through this. So you can see turbulence taking place. But another thing I want to take a peek at here is our spark lines. This is something that's pretty important too, is, uh, is our PKV um, during the miss. I don't think it was missing here. Not really here. Yeah, right around in this area here. Okay, so nothing going on with our ignition system but we most definitely most definitely have something going on in this cylinder in terms of proper combustion so so i'm going to go to the injectors the same way that i went about going to the coils we're going to find the common wire here looks like a black white yeah it looks like a black white black white yeah so what we're going to do is we're just going to come out and we're going to go right to the injectors. All right, we just got our injector patterns. Uh, right here is when this thing was missing pretty good. And we're gonna zoom in right here. We're gonna take a good look at number five. See, we got a nice transition right here. We got our pinnel hump. We're gonna check our voltages. All right. We're at about 13 volts. We are coming down to pretty close to pretty close to ground. And our peak, about 68 volts. And you can see our pinnel hump right here. And we turn back to battery voltage. So we're gonna pan stage right. And we're just gonna go over here and take a look at our suspect cylinder. Where she go? There she is. Okay, peak voltage is exactly the same as the other injector. Same thing, we're at good battery voltage. Then we're coming down to pretty close to ground. Got a nice definition of our pinnel hump here. Um, I'm moving away from an injector problem. We're gonna put an in-cylinder transducer in this thing and uh, take a look at what's going on in that cylinder mechanically. Um, because like I said, I don't think this is an injector problem. I believe this injector was replaced along with the coil, the plug. So I think it's time to uh, just get right to it. All right, everybody's gonna get a kick out of this. Here's my setup. Got a transducer in cylinder three. We also have a zero or minus 30 PSI to I think positive 10 PSI transducer in the intake. Going to what used to be my blue point socket set. 
is now housing a power supply and everything needed to uh, make my transducer setup work here. So we're gonna get that connected to the Pico over yonder. Show you what we got. Okay, as fate would have it, unfortunately, the um, videos that I took of me analyzing the in-cylinder pressure waveforms of cylinders five and three, um, unfortunately, we got lost. But fortunately, I have the waveform saved on my desktop. So first, I'd like to start by saying that the tool that I used is a tool that I put together and it really isn't quite calibrated for pressure. And the reason why I'm saying that is I can't honestly tell you what, you know, 1.47 volts or 2.47 volts equates to exactly in PSI, you know, because unfortunately I didn't really have an, a calibrated in-cylinder pressure transducer on me at the time that I was diagnosing this car. Uh, but I did have the one that I assembled, which nevertheless still represents a real good pressure waveform. Uh, really great tool. I've been using it since day one once I got into doing this type of testing, so I can depend on this thing definitely. Um, and, and the reason why I really say that is because at this point in the diagnosis, I wasn't really interested in pressure. I was more or less interested in volume. Because let's face it, that's what we're seeing when we look at an in-cylinder pressure waveform. We're actually just looking at volume changes inside the cylinder. All right, so with that being said, I'm going to maximize cylinder three. And uh, Pico is nice enough to give us these uh, phase rulers that I'm going to utilize here. I'm just going to put one here. Right at reasonably accurate top dead center. And then the other one at reasonably accurate top dead center. We're just going to zoom in here and throw some cursors in. Now, um, instead of going through this entire waveform, I'm just going to bring you straight to what I believe to be the problem area. And that's right here at exhaust valve closing, intake valve opening in this area right here. You see how we got this little hump here? Okay. Um, now, again, like I stated earlier, we're really only looking at volume changes, and this tool's not really calibrated for pressure. So we're really just doing relative testing, meaning that we're basically comparing one cylinder to the other. So we're going to compare our uh, known good to the cylinder that was misfiring. And right away, we can see we have much higher peak pressure within the cylinder. But like I said, that's really not my concern. So right now we're taking a peek at cylinder five and we're gonna compare this one to cylinder three. And as you can see, we got a problem right here at exhaust valve closing, intake valve opening event. You can see we don't really have that hump going on. And I'm gonna throw a whole bunch of cursors in here so we can really get an idea as to what really, like how much of a difference here that we're talking. Um, and uh, from, from this cursor to this cursor, we're looking at about 4.3 milliseconds or 2.35.72 or degrees. All right, now we're gonna switch back over to cylinder three and um, same distance, um, we're looking at 7.6 milliseconds at 64.86 degrees. So that's pretty significant in comparison to the other one, you know, uh, for the amount of time that this transition takes place. Normally you would want to see this between 30 and 60 degrees. And that's just something that I've found over time um, in my experience from putting this tool inside Hemi's, um, especially the newer generation six fours and five sevens. So anyway, so we definitely have an issue with the exhaust valve closing intake valve opening area. Um, I suspect by looking at this waveform that we have an issue with the in, with the exhaust valve um, opening and closing, or I would say more or less closing, which would explain the increase in pressure right at the top of TDC here and the slow transition, um, you know, down to our intake pocket. So um, definitely no question about it. We got a valve issue on this thing. So the next thing that I wanted to do was examine our 
our valves in the head. And um, I think we came up with a pretty cool way to do it. And I'm just gonna kind of shoot you over to that rest of the video. Here's what we're gonna do. So the in-cylinder waveform pretty much showed me that cylinder three, the exhaust valve not opening. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, handy dandy cheapo inspection camera and I'm gonna put it down in the spark plug hole. But we're gonna do something a little unorthodox just to get the, the end shot here. We had disconnected all the ignition coils. So I'm gonna shove this down in the hole and I'm gonna have him crank it while we're focused on the exhaust valve. All right, so let me get this, let me get this situated here. All right, so, all right, let me get it on, on the valves. Let me just get it nice and in position here. All right, all right, now crank it. Isn't that cool? Keep ranking. It was fun. Done deal. Alright, that's it, man. So, collapse lifter. Can't really tell you for certain. I'm not taking the engine apart. But uh, it's probably where I would head. I would pull the head off and, you know, really go check from here. Check the cam and the so we got to check the cam. We got lifter issues. Who knows? So that's it.